Hi everybody, this is Noelle from Petites and we are doing a plant spotlight on Calathea or Calathea, however you wanna say it. Um, this is a really a fairly big genus, if you will, um, as far as plants are concerned. Obviously you can tell there's lots of varieties and I think this is, you know, 50% of them. So needless to say, there's a lot out there and there's a lot to love with this family. So to start out with, we wanna start with your light requirements. Now, these plants love that medium indirect light requirement, okay? So basically what you're looking at is you are um, bringing them back from a very bright exposure or sunny window, bring them back about six to eight feet away from that window. You could place them near a northern exposure window where it's basically indirect sunlight coming through that window. But again, bring them back because this is the next topic. They're very sensitive to cold temperatures, okay? So don't put your Calathea in a cold room, sunroom, anything like that where the temperatures are really gonna drop below 60 degrees. So they wanna be kind of in that 60 degree mark all the way up to maybe 75, 80. They, they do come from um, tropical rainforests in Central America and South America, but they are on the forest floor. So they're deep under the canopy. So they really do not require any direct lighting, direct sunlight, and they will actually burn pretty quickly if you do put them in a direct light, okay? So again, that medium bright indirect light, um, temperatures kind of on the warmer side, sort of average household temperatures is fine. Um, the next thing with these guys, and it's key, 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 I'm gonna tell you with a big asterisk or ex exclamation point, water, it with these guys is essential and you have to make sure that you take care of your water quality in particular. So a good thing you can do is, and we often talk about this, is filling up your watering can, placing it out on the kitchen counter, what have you, overnight or the bathroom counter overnight, letting it settle to room temperature, but also giving it a chance to evaporate all those good chemicals that we put in the water for our teeth and everything you wanna make sure that that's sort of dissipating because these guys are super sensitive to things like fluoride and chlorine and hot, wa hot water, <laughs> hard water, sorry. So hard water conditions, um, which we do have um, at different areas where we're growing. The next best thing that you could do water-wise is use filtered water. So if you have any of those types of water filters that you keep in, the refrigerator, that's okay. Use some filtered water. I'd still like to see it come up to room temperature uh, before you apply it, but that's something that you could do. Or one of the best things that you could do is use distilled room temperature water to water these guys. And that's really gonna be the best. The whole idea is they're very sensitive to salts. And like I said, all of those chemicals and things. So if you can use that distilled room temperature water, Awesome, that's gonna be really great for them. Oh, and rainwater too. So if you, if you do have a rain barrel and you're collecting rainwater, that's a, great, that's a great source of water for them as well. Average soil moisture, and really they like it that way. And the reason being is because they really do appreciate that high humidity. So this is one of these plants that again, you have to be careful with watering you can let them go very slightly dry and you might see their leaves curl slightly. But again, average moisture is the best and then extra high humidity. So if you put the humidifier out for yourself, put it out for your plant material as well, especially if you're growing Calathea because they really love the humidity. If you don't have a humidifier, of course, you can use humidity trays. So it's just a plastic tray or whatever, tray that's gonna hold water, pebbles, and then fill that pebble tray up with water. So it hits the top of the pebbles. You place your plants directly onto the pebbles. So they are benefiting from that water just slowly evaporating around them or you can cluster them all together. So whenever you cluster your house plants together, you're creating a more humid condition. That's always really, really good. Spray misting's fine, but you've got to spray mist these guys really regularly. Always do that in the morning, okay? That's the best time to do that. 
Soil, I would say just a well-drained potting mix is fine, okay? Just make sure that it can retain some moisture and then let the moisture go and dry out. You never want them sitting in too much water because again, you can get root rot fairly quickly with these guys, so pay attention to that. Maintenance wise, I'm gonna say, they're not the easiest plant out there. So this really is not for a beginning houseplant grower. I'd say probably medium to a little bit higher maintenance as far as they're concerned. Um, some of them are a little bit easier than others and I'm gonna kind of go over that when we go through the varieties here. Um, other than that, fertilizer. I did wanna make a comment about fertilizer with the calatheas. Fertilizer, I would really recommend an organic type of fertilizer. The reason being is usually your organic fertilizers have less salts in them than a man-made fertilizer. And that is something, again, that I'd mentioned that they're very sensitive to. So organic fertilizers, it could be a granular, it could be a liquid, whatever you prefer. And then also using them at half strength. So that's something to keep in mind as well. They just don't need a lot of fertilizer to do well, but you want to give them something to keep their green foliage and all of their colors in their foliage. Keep them nice and crisp. Again, during the growing season, so just April to September is completely fine. Okay. Um, after that, I think we're going to look at um, maintenance. And the one thing that you have to watch is because of the water sensitivities that they have and because they do want that really extra humid condition, you will see like brown edges or brown leaf tips. Don't be afraid to take a clean pair of shears or scissors and go ahead and trim those. That is not a problem whatsoever. And with a lot of these varieties, they can become so dense on the inside that you sometimes can prune through here and take out entire leaves that are a little bit more brown and damaged, and it will actually help open the plant up so it gets a little bit more light, a little bit more air circulation through it. So that's a good thing to go through and trim these quite often. Keep scouting your house plants, as we've mentioned before. Look for indoor insects, things like spider mites, scale, mealybug, they can occur. It's not unusual that they occur on calathea, but if you increase the humidity around them the way that they want it, then you see less of those pest problems. If it's a drier environment that you're trying to grow them in, you're gonna see more of the pest problems, okay? So try to keep them in that humid condition. Okay, let's look at these. Huge family, as I mentioned. They have relatives. You probably have seen these relatives before. Something like a prayer plant, for example. So this is Maranta or prayer plant. All of the Calathea are within the Maranta family. So it's a big family, as I mentioned before. The little bit different with the um, prayer plants is that they truly, their leaves do move from morning to night. And the whole idea is they close their leaves at night to kind of keep moisture in their leaves, okay? Calathea don't move as much like the prayer plant does, but as I mentioned before, if they're drier, they will sometimes roll their leaf edges in. So that's something that you can watch for the Calathea or Calathea, however you wanna say it. Another relative is called Tenanthe, okay? It starts with a C, the C is silent. So this is Tenanthe. This one is Setosa exotica. And you can tell, again, very similar looking leaves, but the leaves tend to be a little bit more oval. They have a little bit of a, a pointy tip at the end. They can be a little bit thicker. And I feel like when I see Tenanthe out there, I see that they're a little bit taller. They can have taller stems to them. So look for that. And then one other one that I have here, Taylor, and I totally lost it. Oh, stromanthe. Okay, we're missing it. So we're gonna get the stromanthe. <laughs> so stromanthe is another relative. Then the rest of these are all very, very typical um, calathea. This is kind of a really new, unusual one called Network. It has beautiful um, sort of crisscross hatched foliage. It is super, super, super unique. 
um, dark kind of veins through here and then light patches. It's really pretty. This is kind of the classic peacock plant or classic Calathea, okay? Um, this is Makiyama and um, Makiyama is just really, really cool. Beautiful, dark, sort of quilted leaves. Very, very pretty. Um, this is another one that people are very um, used to seeing, I'd say. This is called the rattlesnake plant. So this is um, a rattlesnake Calathea or Lancifolia. So Lancifolia, obviously you can tell that long leaf there and then just those undulating edges. I absolutely love it. This is Orbifolia behind it. I wonder why it's called Orbifolia, right folks? So really, really large rounded leaves, beautiful gray striping uh, down the edges. Okay, this one's kind of fun. This is the velvet Calathea, velvet leaf Calathea. Or sometimes they call it fluffy feathers too. And it's got this sort of dark rough top uh, of the leaf to it, but underneath it is like a burgundy velvet. It is so cool. So I love this one. It's just such a pretty plant, um, really, really gorgeous. And then this one I think is Flame Star, and it looks really kind of similar to Medallion. I guess it's a little bit different, but you get that rounded leaf. This is a very new variety. Again, has some quilting to it and some unusual leaf coloration and pattern. The undersides of the leaf are that darker color. Um, so again, um, just what you see typical with the Calathea family is that darker underside. And then Medallion here has beautiful sort of light green, dark green, medium green coloration, a little bit of um, pink every once in a while when it, it hits the light. So you'll see that one as well. And this is, these two are actually very new. This is Yellow Fusion. It is, it is one of the smaller varieties, as you can see, smaller leaf, but beautiful golden coloration on the leaves. And then this one's Beauty Star, right? Did I get this right? Yeah, it's Beauty Star. Um, this has a really pretty like pink pinstripe through the foliage, really, really gorgeous. But again, kind of on the smaller side of the Calathea. So depending on what variety you wanna grow, um, you know, what color scheme you want to bring into the house, there's really just a ton of options with these guys and enjoy. <laughs>